Greeting Earthlings, if you follow the channel, you know that we love all things Apollo, and that during our last visit to Steve Gervetson's amazing space collection, we were given the opportunity to take two holy boxes of Apollo electronics to our lab. These are the boxes that brought you voice, data and live TV from the moon, and should be early masterpieces of microwave electronics, the blackest of black arts in analog electronics. Our Apollo transponder is now fully up and working, but in order to communicate with it, we need to recreate the ground transmit and receive equipment. In the last episode, we did just that using modern software-defined radio. Ballant and Austin are now hard at work to add more capability to it in 21st century style, that is, by programming it into the radio software. However, we also have some very cool original NASA ground test equipment. As you can imagine, no software in these, it's 100% delicious Motorola microwave hardware. Way back in episode 7, we worked on reviving our test NASA receiver, and we sure made it work. However, it did not receive our Apollo signal. We discovered that in the intervening years between the Apollo program and now, it had been modified to work with another spacecraft. We'll work on the complex procedure to bring it back to its original state in a future episode. And that was only the receiver. To recreate the link, we'd also need the companion test PM transmitter. Unfortunately, this is the one box that was missing from our extensive NASA test equipment collection. Well, rejoice, I said was, because it's missing no more. Let's go film this. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like we have a new box. Yes, the one missing box. The one we were missing, transmitter. So that came from the same collector that gave us the manual for the receiver, the PM receiver. And inside is all RF prettiness. It's uh, also a 22 megahertz -ish crystal multiplied by 96 in stages and it's uh, guess what we uh, the crystal is under the same little box we looked at it. it has been changed to another frequency which we're not sure what it is but this this should be simpler it should be VCO and then times 4 multiplier Phase modulator, that's the important box. Times 24 multiplier, so it's times 96. Mystery RF filtering. <laughs> and then, what is that box? Oh, it's a directional, so, yeah, directional, directional coupler. Yep. Co coupler. So yeah, so the main output goes in here, which is the load. So it's really a test transmitter. It has a probably low power output. You peel off a little bit from the directional coupler, attenuate it, and then it goes into what is this? This is a big variable attum attenuator. Yeah, this is an attenuator, and this is another attenuator. And then out it comes. Oh, it sweeps! It sweeps for acquisition. I wonder we if. Might, it, we might have to feed it. Ah, uh, yeah, from, it has sweep input. Sweep limit, then you can. So that's why they need the VCO, that's for the sweep. Right. Okay, so you want to flip it over to. Uh, so yeah, you see the under, underside. Down there. Okay. okay. So that's the other side, it's neat. And so we got filtering on the power inputs there. Serious filtering, look at that double gaskets and everything. That's the power supply. Mm. What we think is just a big power brick here. Very nice wiring. Okay, so it's these went just straight through to the front panels. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is this is the button that doesn't have any labeling on it, so it, it definitely does something. We just have to figure out what. what. So the transmitter is a lot st more straightforward than a receiver, mostly a straight shot. Uh, you start at 22 megahertz with a VCO oscillator, 
then there's a series of multipliers until it is 2.1 gigahertz um, for the uplink signal. The only two wrinkles is that the oscillator is actually a VCO and there's a modulator sandwich in there. So here's the VCO 22 megahertz and you control its frequency with the sweep N. So the reason you have a VCO is not to do a phase lock loop. It's simply to allow you to tune the frequency to compensate for Doppler so you can lock the receiver. Control uh, for the sweep inputs is input the VCO, gets into a times 4 multiplier. So start at 22 megahertz by the time time 4 is 88. There's a little filter. Then uh, you have your phase modulator uh, sandwich in there and that connects as you would expect to the modulation in so that's where all your data and the voice comes in to be transmitted uh, and then there's a little attenuator to prevent back reflections uh, and then there's a 24 multiplier so it's multiplied by, by 4 first and then by 24 the total multiplying is 96 then you have a microwave filter. Then on the front end, you have the series of attenuators, three in a row, because you want extremely little signal out to test your receiver sensitivity down to minus 130 dB. So you take that signal, uh, most of it goes into a load, you peel a little bit. Uh, by the time it's here, it's about minus 10 dBm. There is an adjustment, so it's exactly 10 dBm. And then you go into this um, big attenuator that has this huge range, so you can bring it down to almost nothing, uh, to the limit of uh, sensitivity of the receiver. And then out it comes in front to RF out. So fairly straightforward architecture, just 22 megahertz to start, multiply by 4, phase model 8, multiply by 24, attenuate it, out you go. And lots of gold in our beautiful transmitter and it looks rather pristine. Question is, will it work? And if so, is it still at the right frequency or has it been modified too? Only one way to find out, turn it on. We have our transmitter all hooked up to the power meter. Want to try it on? Alright, here we go. Yeah, we're somehow out of plugs. Okay, not on, so you probably want to press yeah. the big green button. Yep. And, alright uh, guys, doing log error again. It's off, RF out. So you want to put it on, press the button. And we don't get anything, that might be because I don't have out. There you go. Oh. Okay, so minus 29. All right, so we got something going here. So we wanted to check the level first. So I don't try the RF analyzer. Okay, I, I think I should be safe to plug into the RF analyzer. And now it's on the RF special analyzer. And there it is. Quick search, micro center frequency span. There it goes. 2.0691 gigahertz. And it blew up again. Hmm, the transmitter kept tripping my breaker. Maybe I had too much equipment on the circuit. So we took most of it off and tried again. Also, while it worked for a short while, we could tell the frequency was not the Apollo frequency, but it was exactly matched to our modified PM receiver. Both came most likely from the same test setup. 2.0691, is that what it's supposed to be? Yeah, it should be 2.0691125. Oh, it's so. 118, so that, that works. Pretty good. Uh, and it's minus... 10 dBm, so I guess this is not graduated in dBm, this is graduated in dB from the reference. Oh! It did it again. Something is taking more than 10 amps <laughs> <laughs> on that circuit. 
It turns out the breaker in question was a newer GFCI type, so it did not need 20 amps to trip. Just a small imbalance between the two phases caused by a leakage to ground would trip it. And I could see two suspicious gizmos that looked like inline filters on each of the lines in. So I sort of suspect that one of these guys is leaking a little bit to ground. And Mike, you found what it is? Yeah, I found a catalog with these Sprague filters. Uh, that really looks like it. And you tell me it's number two? Yeah, circuit number two. So it's just an LC filter. Basically, what could happen is that one of the capacitor leaks a little bit more than the other one, mm -hmm. or is unbalanced compared to the other one, and then the, it would trip, trip the GFC with a very very low amount, right? Because right. the, the, the fuse didn't blow, so it's GFC related. Yeah, it's a 20 amp breaker, and these are both 1 amp fuses. Right. Why don't we remove them and test them? So we're using calls tester with a magic eye from the hills of. Transylvania or Romania or whatever. Flashback. So explain, explain the magic eye to me. Magic eye is a device that they, they found in the, the remote hills of Romania and they mine them <laughs> and when the circuit is tuned in, the eye opens and stares at you. With end of flashback. The capacitor is at this end and we're going to put 150 volts to it and see how, how it charges, then opens up. So that's a good cap that doesn't leak, a good filter. And that's the other one. And that's a bad one, it leaks. So that's why we were tripping the, um, the GFC breaker. We want to replace him for SIM, so we found one on eBay. It's a little expensive, but hey. We'll have the same part. One week later. So fortunately we could find some more of those filters on eBay and they are good. They don't leak. So we have two good filters. They should be repaired. Moments later. So we got our first bad switch in Apollo equipment. This switch is bad. Uh, and fortunately, I had another one, just a switch assembly of the same thing. And also one of the macro switches is bad. So I guess those have an inherent weakness. I replaced this guy with that guy and we'll make a good switch with two half bad switches. Now, unfortunately, it's not the same switch. This is my replacement switch and this is the original one. It has this little sensing had a tab over it uh, which seems to go into the molding uh, maybe if I can infiltrate this one with the oxid and revive it so that's the replacement one that was dead and I drilled a little hole in it to infiltrate the oxid and now that works We have a micro hole in it, maybe that will be enough to temporarily repair it. We can keep on go going. Ah, I think it worked. Yeah. So it works again. Can you demonstrate, Mike? So. Yeah, so we have on, off and on for the RF. Okay, and then we discover that as all good engineers do, they put replacement bulbs with the wrong voltage in there. So we're going, that's why it was so dim. So we're going to put the right ones. Ah, yeah. much better. Much brighter. Ah, there you go, that's how it should be. Okay, so you have to change the one on the power. Hey! Yeah! Alright! <laughs> so finally we got to a point where we have switches that work. Yes! And it's not tripping the fuse. Yeah. Right? Okay, down, so, yeah. so we can, we can uh, we'll finally be able to characterize it correctly. So after these annoyances were dealt with, we are ready to fully characterize the transmitter. 
We don't have the manual for it and we will need to retune it after we change the crystal. Therefore, we need to characterize it exhaustively before we change the crystal, then we'll tune it back to what it was. Of utmost importance is the pair at each stage in dBm, the sweep range and sweep rate in hertz per volt, and the phase modulation sensitivity in radians per volt. Mike, you want to turn it on, see if we can see it we do. Them. 2.69108 gigahertz and we want to figure out what happens when we tune it, right? If we can track the VCO directly, it, it, it's sorry, it's up there now. So we have it on here, we have so that's before multiplication from the VCO, that's after multiplication. We have a visual on the spectrum analyzer, so we should be all good to try to sweep. Okay, so the logical thing is that sweep n is a bidirectional voltage. And there should be in and out. Like this. Oh, yeah, that was good. Aha! There you go. Okay, we're sweeping. Oh, look Look at the... It's beautiful on the... On the R spectrum analyzer. We really see it. Look at that. Do 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 Lovely. Fantastic. We sweep easily. All right, so let's characterize that. So I've uh, zeroed myself over here, so we should just get the delta. Okay. And so now I'll go and do. One volt. And it went lower in frequency. No, it went. Yeah, it, went, it didn't go lower in frequency. So this is one volt. And it moved 480 hertz. So it's the same thing. It's 500 hertz per, um, per volt, about, right? This is yeah. what we did with the other one. Right? Yeah. So it's okay. That's good. Consistency is Consistent good. with the uh, uh, receiver. And then. We'll do minus one volt. Okay, and it's 475. Now, do you think we should test the limits? How far does it go? It keeps going. So at minus two volts, it's 940, 951. I guess tweaking okay. those buttons here, I'm not really sure what they do. My one limit there. Oh! Yeah! You're yeah. reading it in. Okay, so that just prevents you from... It's, it's upper and lower bounds as to... Um, rather than scaling. Yeah. Right, so it's... Uh, there was an intense debate before whether it would just scale it or just limit it, and it's limiting it. Uh, c can you get it to where it's limited? And then I'll try to increase the voltage. Okay, it's limited right now. Yeah. It's not doing it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, it's really a limit. Put it, put it back to uh, release it completely. There we go. And let's see how far I can go. Keeps going, so that's... 2.5 volts. I had to have this almost all the way. Okay, so it uh, stops. It's two plus minus two point. It, here, I'm I'm hitting the limit here. Oh, okay. So the limit is two, about 2.5 volts. Mm -hmm. uh, are you all uh, at, at the extreme here? Uh, not at the extreme. Oh, okay. So you were just. Oh, it keeps going. So you were limiting me. <laughs> Three volts. 3.3 volts still keeps going. Minus. Uh, uh. Are you at the? Are you still limiting? No, I, I'm not limiting you here. You, you had the you had the max. Yeah. I'm getting stuck right here. So, okay. So it's the maximum I hit at 3.5 volts. A little bit more. So I suppose it's symmetric. I'm going to go the other direction. Three volts. One, four, four, five. And then I suppose I'm going to hit the max at 
Oh, right there, I'm already maxed out. This side, it's 3.2 is where I'm maxed out. Oh, yeah, you, yeah, I, I could see you. So I think it's plus minus 3 volts, mm -hmm. basically, for the max. And then you can rein it in to whatever the... Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, so the next and probably last thing we have to do is check modulation. So I'm modulation in on uh, 70 kilohertz, which was the data uh, subcarrier. And we should see a sideband over there. And ta da! We are modulating sidebands. Plus minus 70 kilohertz. And then the voice would be at 30. And uh, you put the voice at 30. So it would be over here somewhere. But 30. That's voice. But we see a fair amount of second harmonic. More than. Uh, oh, because I'm square wave. Doop, sorry. <laughs> there we go. That'll do it. So this is 30. And uh, but I s if I. So I'm modulating about uh, 400 millivolt peak to peak, and, and and I don't have that much in the sidebands. And if I modulate it more, I see a lot of sidebands, and we checked it. Exactly generated inside by the phase modulator. Uh, so if we knew our math, I know exactly how much voltage I put in. We know how many db down we are from the center peak mm -hmm. so uh, we should know what the degree per volt is but we don't know our math so instead we <laughs> 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 i think we're going to unpack the key site uh, equipment that we got and we have a modern spectrum analyzer that has supposedly the uh, phase demodulation and measurement package yeah uh, because it's a, li it's a software license that you add to it it's always it should tell us the number magically. It's always nice when your instruments do the math for you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, we're going to use 21, 21st century magic. But so far, it, no, it works fine. Mm -hmm. And then we have to go through and measure power. Yeah, so the next, next thing we want to do is just go everywhere and measure power so that we can, we can realign it. We have, a, we have an idea that we have realigned it uh, at the correct power. Mm -hmm. All right. So we just untied each coax connection and measured RF power at each stage using my HP RF power meter. This way we can retune it to the same value later on. So we have all the power levels at each stage and we should get at least that if we are relying correctly. And the only thing we don't have, well actually we have not calculated it, is the degree phase degree per volt of modulation and we hope that the Agilent equipment will tell us that, calculate mm -hmm. it for us. Actually it's it's over there. Look at that. The Agilent key site. There you go. This is the boxes for the next episode. Unboxing key site equipment and this is a uh, Lent who has courtesy of ElectroRent. ElectroRent. So they are going to come on Monday and help me set it up. I look forward to that. So see you in the next episode where we'll get to unpack all the modern Keysight instruments sponsored by ElectroRent and redo a whole Apollo Grand Transmit and Receive Station with Keysight equipment while we are at it. See you then!